Viva Tequila Seltzer, the number one hard seltzer in the world and the official hard seltzer of Day Drinking With Dog. Ditch them all, add tequila. Welcome back, Day Drinking With Dog, a special before noon edition on a Tuesday. We got uh, the 20th of February, 2024. I have my good friend with me, Ray Cruciani. Ray, how are you doing today? Good, man, good. Good uh, to be here. Thanks so much for coming with some Pendleton whiskeys. Yeah, baby. We're gonna- Drink some uh, some whiskey today. I know I'm just coming off a little stomach bug, so uh, I will drink it for you. Yeah, you're gonna drink it for me, <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll I'll guzzle it later. And I just met this gentleman about uh, seven minutes ago in the parking lot, John Sohegan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You are uh, Happy to be here. You are working with PBR, uh, yes, Professional sir. Bull Riders League, right? Yes, sir. Uh, how long you been with them? Been with them since 2016. Oh wow, almost eight years now. Wow, that's awesome. I was just telling Ray, I was, uh, he actually brought this to my attention, I don't know, it was was back in January, right? Yes, yeah. And uh, he's like, I got an idea for you, I got an idea for you for the show. And I said, what's up? He's like, well, let's do uh, PBR. I got some PBR coming into town, you know, they're coming to Bridgeport and, you know, in my bartender head. I'm thinking the beer, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, many people do. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? I, I, I don't know, Ray. I don't know about that. It, it's kind of, it was a fad about five years ago. Kind of came back, kind of died out. But he's like, no, 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 no. The bull riding, the bull riding. Nothing so like uh, bull riding in Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> so I watched it the other day, and uh, it's one of those things, casual viewing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, don't really know the rules exactly. I know the longer you ride on the bull and all that is better, and then there's also a, like gymnastics thing with it you know it's yeah. judged right yeah it's a judged event so you have to have a little flair and style and I, i'm guessing right, right. yes so yeah. so the uh, bull riding score is 100 points uh 50 points for the bull and 50 points for the rider so the bull is judged on his um jump his twists his change of direction uh, the difficulty of, of riding him essentially, yeah. and the riders judged on how well, how much control he has. So, um, in order to have a successful bull ride, you need to ride for eight seconds. Um, one hand in the bull rope, one hand in the air. That free hand cannot touch the bull, cannot touch the ground, cannot touch you, and you need to maintain that for eight seconds. Typically, fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred pound bull, one hundred forty to one hundred fifty pound guy. Um, there's Bull a, wins. There's a, <laughs> typically, even, yeah. even a, on a successful ride, right. you still got to get off. You still get it off the thing, right? right? Right. And that's why we have three bullfighters there yeah. to help distract the bull, so you can get off and get away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a still very dangerous sport, um, and like you said, the, there's judges. There are multiple judges, so there's four judges, and it's the top scores that count. Okay. Don't they uh, like saw the horns now? Uh, you have to, they used to have them we, like we call it blunting. blunting. So the horns, if you think about, <laughs> if you think about your fingernails, the horns are similar to fingernails, and right. uh-huh. you can't cut the tips off. But essentially, it's to protect the riders, oh, right? Sure. Uh, a sharp horn can Did essentially somebody, kill you. Somebody got killed like twenty five years ago or so. Uh, somebody got killed a lot recently. Recently, about five years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. And and a lot of that is you know it, it's time and place and. It's, a it's horn just, might get under right, the vest. Right. right now, we do as much as we can to protect the riders. Um, the bulls, by the time they get to this level, are seasoned and um, they know their job. Yeah. Uh, and for the most part, most of them, when they're done, they they run off. Um, others are still, you know, they're still wild animals, right? So, right. Um, they go at you if you're if you're vulnerable. So, is the strategy of the sport like, uh, like say say you're trailing, right? going into the final round or whatever you almost want to get on the the, the harder the bull, toughest the toughest bull to because you need to because you you're going to gain points, points by yeah, right like like degree of difficulty yes. and, yeah right right so right. some bulls are you know reputation wise and uh, the the bulls are scored on every ride right so you'll have bulls that are rated and ranked just like riders are rated and ranked um and the tougher the bull so typically a, an event bridgeport for example will be two long rounds and a short so each rider, I think we have 35 participants, each rider will ride on Friday night, each rider will ride on Saturday night, and then the top 10 will move on to the short round and they will compete. So if you're rated first after the two long rounds, you get to select, the, the, here's the bullpen, Right. you get to select the bull that you want to ride. And if, it, if it's tight, they'll pick a tough bull because they want to get the most points they can get. 
So if they're winning by a lot, they want to be a it's safe some, ride. And it, it, you know what? Everybody has a different strategy. Okay. We had guys like J.B. Mooney, who was our GOAT, um, who would never, ever, it, whether he had a, a full bull ahead of somebody, he'd still take the toughest bull out there because right. that's what he wanted to do. And he's a showman, nice. too. Yeah, nice. There's a lot of showmanship yeah. to oh, yeah. it, right? Yeah. I saw that with Cassio Diaz. Cassio Diaz. He's number one in the world right now. Right, right? now yeah. he is. Yeah. And, and Cassio made his, he, his debut really came out on our team series. So bull riding has been an individual sport forever. Right. Right. Um, two years ago, we started a league, and we have actually have franchises. Um, and we have now we're going to expand from eight teams to ten teams. But Cassio rides for the Kansas City Outlaws, and he was a breakout star there. He's a young guy; he's twenty years old, maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, coming out of that, he went on the UTB tour. So um, we have two level tours. The UTB is Unleash the Beast, which is our sort of you would say major leagues. But we had an expansion tour for guys working their way up to there, and that's the Velocity Tour. Um, UTB works major markets big buildings the velocity tour is a little bit smaller buildings um typically a utb is two or three day event and velocity tour is one or two day event okay hmm. and velocity is sponsored by pendleton correct? velocity is the yes. pendleton whiskey velocity tour yes which you can see right here in the table yeah it's lovely which and, and excellent whiskey we we not only love the product we love the people from pendleton yeah great supporters of the sport great supporters of the western lifestyle um, they've been with us. I, I think they've been with us since I've been here, and every year they just get stronger and stronger. And uh, just love being a part of the. What has yeah. been like the year on year growth of the company? It, it seems like I just went to their website, you know, yesterday, mm -hmm. and it's it's pretty. There's a lot of one. There's a lot of leagues. It seems like you said, right? You know, a lot of tiers of it, right? And there, there's and actually the, a and third the, tier. There's, yeah. there's the what we call the the um, pro touring. I think it's the pro touring event, yeah. which are individually sanctioned events where guys can get started. So you go there, you get points, you earn your way up into the velocity tour. Then you're how do you get started? Them. Like I like I almost feel like you know you watch. You we know. we actually have a rider that started by watching YouTube yeah. and, and <laughs> stringing a barrel in his yard and riding a barrel. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Zeke. Z but that but first time, get, that, that first time on a bull, and I'm well, not talking uh, about one at the and, bar, and, and you know, well, like well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, there yeah started at one of those mechanicals, at a right? Bar and say, hey, I can yeah, do this. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have 14 PBR bars around the country too. And they all have you, yeah, them. yeah. We have a licensee, uh, live hospitality. Uh, most of them are part of districts. The Battery in Atlanta. Is it like a golf now of of no of bull riding it, it, or it's a country bar with a with, with a bull. bull. It's, yeah. it's a yeah. nightclub. Nice. Um, Live Hospitality is part of the Cordish companies, and they build these, um, for the most part, there are um, districts around ballparks and that kind of thing. So Texas Live is in between uh, where the Texas Rangers play and AT&T Stadium. Oh, cool. And it's a huge facility that has about eight different bars and restaurants in it. So there's sort of the main arena bar, there's a PBR bar, there's a Troy Aikman's, there's a number of different hmm. dining and nightclub opportunities. Um, gas and uh, power and light district in Kansas City uh, has has one in it. Uh, that's the original PBR bar. Um, like I said, the uh, the battery in Atlanta. We're in Baltimore, Philadelphia, Xfinity. I'm assuming they're full service food, drinks. Actually, life. the most of them are just bars. Really? Yeah, <laughs> we have two of them that serve food. Oh wow! Um, but for the most part, because th the districts have a bunch of food options. Oh, right? okay. So PBR yeah. lends itself to. Country bar, right? Party and line dance. It's it's a it's a night out. It's nice. a dancing night out. Nice and riding a bull a little bit. Nice. We gotta so, try that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get him to put one. I don't know about uh, strapping myself to a leather. No. Um, I bull, I did it once. Parade bull? No, oh, no, no, no. Mechanical. I was like, what? Wait, can, can you get on a live bull at this place? No, uh, no, no. It's no, mechanical. No, Damn, no, Ray. no. Oh, Ray, Ray with the sauce. I'm like Ray. Yeah. Getting re getting back to your original question, a lot of these kids grow up on ranches. Yeah, um, rodeo parents are worse than little league parents. Oh, they put three year olds oh, on on sheep oh, and geez. call it mutton busting, <laughs> and, and the kids love it. The kids awesome. love it. They, 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 they graduate to mini bulls. We'll start on that. Okay? Yeah, we'll, we'll, you and I will start that way. Uh, we'll crush those things. <laughs> you can. Well, I will anyway. Ray, you're a little thinner than me. Uh, they graduate to mini bulls. Um, and then they go up to steer and then full full size bulls. But That's junior awesome. high school and high school rodeo are very, very big uh, across the middle of the country. Oh, that's awesome. See that? That's pretty cool. No, I, I, did, I did the mechanical bull once. 
oh. after the New Haven St. Patrick's Day parade. The bar doesn't even exist. I couldn't even tell you what the bar was called. Oh, God. And I just, I, it's funny, like, when you see the girls get, you be in the bars, you see the girls, it's almost like you can, you can see the guy, like, all right, we're going to go a little easy on her. <laughs> I'm like, I got this. And then I get up there, and I can just see, he's like, you're off in, like, done. one bump. And that's, <laughs> I mean, it's it's all like, I pulled my back, my oh, neck yeah. was hurt. <laughs> it's all, all up to the operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did like, that about a month ago up at uh, the casino. They have a, the comic roadhouse up there, and they have a bull, uh, full time there and uh, country band it's really cool but anyways I uh, was uh, dared to get on that bull yeah and uh, and I did and uh, I lasted about five six seconds that's good right <laughs> pretty good ride. I was like I'm sure he was playing with me for the yeah. first three seconds yeah. but let you I feel just, like you got yeah, something out just, of the experience I, I was like listen I drank too much Pendleton is I there a mechanical that. bull league no no um, well, I was just curious yeah. we're actually working on a, on a nationwide contest um, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to support our world finals, uh, but we've gone down that road, and and truthfully, it's it's one of those things where you need a lot of liability insurance. Oh, I'm, I so can imagine. The guys that operate have to, yeah. you know, it's, right. it's a tough thing. Right, we're in a tough world. You yeah, know, people are litigious about a lot of things. Yeah, so you got to be really careful. I see those. Like, uh, how has the the prize money elevated over the years? Prize money is elevated pretty well. Um, I think we awarded just on the UTB tour. Um, well over twelve million dollars last year. Wow! Like that. Um, team I see series. Top earner was like seven million. Yeah, not yeah. a year, but like no, career t- earnings. Career earnings yeah. seven million. That's yeah. JP Mooney. Yeah. So uh, top guy in the year will be somewhere between. They get a million dollar bonus for winning the world championship. Um, mm-hmm. They'll earn somewhere between a million three and a million eight. Our wow. champion for the year. The year. The ch- wow. Yeah. And and plus they're probably I'm getting I'm guessing they're all the they're on sponsors sponsors and all, and all that stuff. So it, they're independent contractors. So a lot of them you see the logos on it. It's similar to, to car racing, right? Yeah. Yeah. The individual mm-hmm. guys get their their partners and that kind of thing. Nice. And now with like Instagram and all oh, that, yeah. I'm sure these guys are promoting themselves there's, heavy too. There's a number of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, ours is uniquely um, our sport is uniquely international as well. Um, we have tours in Australia, Canada. Um, we sanction events in Mexico, uh, and we have a, in Brazil. Yeah. So we have, and yeah. a lot of our top riders are Brazilian. What's the, yeah, what's the season? The what's the season? Is big bull riding country. How yeah. long? How long is the yeah, season? Yeah. What's the season run? The U, um, UTB is November through May. Uh, the Pendleton Whiskey Velocity Tour starts in January and goes through May. It ends two weeks prior because the champion has a chance to go to world finals. Gotcha. Um, we do a lot of double ups. So a lot of on this tour, we'll have two events on a weekend in two different markets. Yeah. Is this this tour is ten years old now. It has grown immensely. Um, with Pendleton support, we've taken it from a probably 10, 12 event um, tour to it's doing twenty five to thirty events a year. Yeah. Wow. Um, which is tremendous. And there's more opportunities for guys to win money, more opportunities to compete, all those kinds of things. And and we're going to more in different places. Right. You know, coming to Bridgeport, this is the first time we're in Bridgeport. I'm right. thrilled. Yeah. I, awesome. I, I've been in Fairfield for right, right, 40 right. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm like awesome. screaming at the guys. I'm gotta home. Go, you got to <laughs> go to Bridgeport. Yeah. Um, and finally, we booked it, and I'm doing everything I can to help promote it and, and get people to go out. They even gave me my own promo code. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. I'm right. I, yep. I can help people Promo. with discounts. <laughs> um, so what what should a fan expect that's never really watched it, seen it? Like, they're saying, you know what, let me go check this out. Outside of the actual bull riding itself, I'm sure there's a pretty cool show that it, goes it, on. Yes, it, it, it's, it's um, hardcore rock and roll, uh, music backgrounds. There's pyro to start the show. It is an, a dream for, for the younger generations in the sense that it's bursts of energy, yeah. right? It, it's that eight seconds at a time. You got time to text or, or yeah, 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 yeah. So the, you know, for the ADD and all of us, it's it's perfect. It's, you know, it's a phenomenal <laughs> point, though. Oh yeah. You know, you go to right. the. I, I, it sickens me when I see these like like just watching the All Star game the other night. Oh, Everybody's sitting God. looking at their phones. Yeah, everyone's got their phones or they're f- like filming it. Like like, I stopped filming shit a long time ago. Because I realized I never rewatched. We it. never watched. Yeah. 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 You don't get a chance. I'm getting to that point. Yeah, now. Like, you don't be your a father. To enjoy it, <laughs> right? Right. Like, enjoy right. it. So what this allows you to do is like in between. Yeah. Right? So take some pictures, right. send it to your friends. You know, and, and at the same time, one of the things that's hurt us a little bit, in my opinion, on television, is that a guy comes in, he's wearing a helmet, right? So since '94, if you're born 
before 94, you can wear a hat. But after 94, you have to wear a helmet. Oh, that's So anybody that's just 30 years old about has that to wear a helmet. That was a hockey rule. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you have to do it over yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you got a couple of these face 30s yeah. guys that are Craig still... Craig McTavish was the last guy yeah, to wear a helmet. But, so the... You watch it on TV. Yeah. Guy gets in. He's he, he's tying himself in, into the you know onto the bowl. He has his out. He gets off. He waves to the crowd. And he's done. So he's not on television for more than a minute. Right. Right. So to get people to understand who these guys are and do background stories. Yeah, and that yeah, kind of yeah. Thing, that's where you really need the social media and the websites mm. and the yeah. To, so people can get to understand who these guys are. Right. Where they. And came now that from. we have the teams. The franchises, we have people that are marketing in all these new markets that are helping. So, Cassio Diaz, a, a casual fan, I have no idea who this guy is. Right. And, you know, but... Where's he now, from? Now, he's from Brazil. Brazil. Oh, Brazil? Yeah. Man. Not a lot of kids in Bridgeport named Cassio. No. no. <laughs> you know? Well, last name, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a lot of Diaz's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's fun. I I am pumped. I'm excited. I was on the fence, like you know, should I take a night off? No, I'm going. You're you're gonna gonna go. Wait, should, should, does it I've matter which night in, I go? I've been working in sports for forty years, almost forty yeah. years. These are the toughest kids I've ever met. I can imagine. They they they, they literally put their lives at risk every time. Every they time they get on that bowl, yeah. they're probably getting and, and not hurt, but like they're, they're, they're gonna feel like crap. You know, like they're, they're gonna feel that the next when day. When they get they're, to their fifties and sixties, yeah. The G forces. What's the oldest current rider? Do you know? A guy named Ejene Caminas was our 2003 champion. Yeah. So He's still going now? He retired. Okay. He came back about two years ago. He got in the best shape of his life, and he's been riding the last two years. Oh, wow. <laughs> What's he in his 40s? Ejene's 43, 44. Oh, God, wow, right. Man. Imagine that. We have a, a guy named Joao Ricardo Vieira. Joao is 38, and he's been in the top 10 since I've been around. So for the last eight years, wow. he's still performing at an incredible level. Um, but this sport can break a guy. We've had, you know, sure. a kid named Jess Lockwood came on. He's the same age as my older son, God bless. Um, but he came on tour, won two championships, and then hurt his groin, hurt his hip, hurt his, you know, just broken. Oh and God. he hasn't been on tour. He's trying to get better so he can he can participate. You know, it, it, he's been sort of out of it for two years. And LeBron wow. needs the second night of a back-to-back off. Yeah. Come right. on. Come on. Come on. That's it. <laughs> you know, these guys are they, tough. I thought they were putting These guys ride both nights? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so they're riding two nights so in a row. And, and if they make it to the, the championship round, they're riding three bulls. And then they're driving days. to the next venue? Yeah. And a bull will only work a maximum of two days on a weekend. Okay. So if it's a three-day event, the bull can work, you know, Friday, Sunday. Um, but a championship bull will have maybe 30 outs in a season. And the, the maximum ride is eight seconds. That's 240 seconds, right. which is about six minutes, I think, right? Yep. Uh, is it four minutes? Four, four minutes. Four. So four minutes, he's working yeah. four minutes during the course of a year. The bulls are treated incredibly well. They have, <laughs> I was going to ask that question. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the animal welfare, people, like, it's one of those things that people in markets like ours don't understand. Oh, they tie their, you know, right. genitals. No, they don't. There's a, there's about a foot in between part A and part B, and there's a, a flank rope that's, that's wrapped around, but it's not wrapped tight. Yeah. So just like if you tied a ribbon on your, your cat's leg, and they're trying to get it off. That's sort of that's, what yeah, that's yeah. doing. These bulls are bred to buck. They have acupuncturists. They have they have. Come on, I'm serious. Some of them, some of them take acupuncture. They play them like music they, in they, their little pens. Massage. They're treated. Yeah, they massage. are treated incredibly well. There are requirements that they're only allowed to be in the trucks for a certain amount of time. Right. The amount of uh, hay and whatever that they ride on has to be a certain level. Um, they are treated incredibly huh. well and they're only male bovines in the United States that die of old age wow. the rest of them are on your dinner table at some point right our guys are all retired to stud and they they live out their days on a ranch to so oh. the, they're treated incredibly well wow so people worry about that stuff and and our guys now are, are they like a horse if they break a leg kind of thing or they rehabilitate I, th- I th- guess it depends on the 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 amount of break I in all the years that I've been with the organization I don't never never seen it happen no hmm. I mean they are bulls they're, yeah they're you not know. <laughs> well, you they, see they are they, top heavy those resources they got <laughs> they're ten times the size right. of the guys that are on yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. They, the average bull rider is I'd say five six five seven 140 pounds yeah. 38 inch chest 28 inch waist 
Wow. I do their world. They we give them jackets for making the world finals. We give them a nice leather jacket every year, and out of the. 50 jackets that they make 35 or size small <laughs> you know and it's like really Dude, now I'm right assuming on. these guys are like you know they ride around all, I'm sure they're really good friends with each other or there, are there rivalries are there personal rivalries going the, on the battles between the guy and the bull right yeah. obviously they're all competing for right. and it's just money on the line so yeah, right, at, right. Yeah. but at the, at the same time they're rooting for each other they tie each other you know they help rope the bulls together they they look out for each other. There's guys that travel together, just like in any anything else. Um, they they really look out for one another because they're all in it together. Yeah, you know. Hmm. And, and there's some just like any other sport. There's some switch. that you know. There, there's guys that have attitudes <laughs> and the other guys aren't really enamored with and whatever. Right. But you got to be somewhat cocky and arrogant. Too. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. These are real cowboys. Badass. I mean, they, 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 Is there are there really rodeo groupies? They call them buckle bunny. <laughs> buckle bunnies. I love it. <laughs> so yes, nice. the answer is yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. I like it. Buckle bunnies. Uh, can you introduce me to a buckle bunny? I don't Friday? know. I, we don't know if we have any in Bridgeport yet. We'll, oh we'll come on! Well, I'll get some. Yeah. I'll start recruiting recruit, now. Recruit them. Yes. Here you go. The, the bars actually call their waitresses buckle. I'm going to put on Facebook like who wants to be a buckle bunny. Let's we'll go. Get we'll take it, right? We have the party yeah. bar. Pendleton girls. Yeah. There Here we go. go. Right. We're on this. Buckle bunnies. Yeah. Why we'll not? stick them in the uh, party barn that yeah. we have there. Now the barn is like right this. So the so barn is on the dirt, right yeah, under, the dirt. right in front of the house. So the the way the the arena is set up, there's the bucking chutes, and and we bring 750 tons of dirt into the arena wow. and lay it out. It's a foot deep, and we have dirt guys that make sure that dirt is that the the quote unquote playing surface is safe for everybody involved. Yeah, right because. You have the bulls. You got the riders who get thrown off of bulls and have to land in the dirt. Right. You have the safety men that are on horses. It's got to be safe for everybody. Hmm. Um, so we have all of that. Um, what what's, were we talking about? I'm sorry. Party bar. Party, oh, party bar. So little party shoots. Yeah. And then dirt. And then the other side of the arena is, we, is what we call front of house, and that's where our announcers are, the production team that's running the show, the guy that calls the show, our producer, um, and right in front of them is the Pendleton Party Barn. And oh, Pen- wow. So Pendleton Ooh, let's is go. right. You're, you're on a rail. The yep. dirt's right in front of you, and they're coming at you. Oh, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. What, what's so a, what's you better a, get there early because the who's fighting for the rail? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'll be Third sitting back by the whiskey spot. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll be by the bar. There's a yeah. bar there, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I'll wiggle my way up every I, once I, in a while. A, but a very large uh, uh, scoreboard, so you can watch the replays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what setup take? Uh, they Gosh. will come in on probably some point five o'clock on Friday morning. It'll take all day Friday to get the arena set up. Wow! With the steel and the dirt, and yeah, because we bring our own steel to our events and have to set it up. So you, you have, have like your own like like, stuff. like like payloaders and shit and all we, that. Well, we or use, do you just we, use local. We use local stuff, yeah. labor, and there's yeah. a, a, a small crew that travels from city to city. Yeah. And it's the same so dirt, on, the, just, on this weekend, drop it and pick it up. On this weekend, we have this show. We're in Indianapolis with the UTB, and I forget what our other um, pedals and whiskey side is. But yeah, you know, we'll, we'll be in three three arenas this weekend. Yeah. So wow. if three crews out, three full sets of steel. It's it's like uh, I think three hundred thousand pounds of steel that they <laughs> ring the arena with with the shoots. You know, it's funny because I was when I said like when I was flipping by the other day, and Cassio was like getting strapped in and all that, and I was looking at the. The steel, and it had you know Pendleton sticker yep. and Monster and all your sponsors yep. and stuff, and I'm like that shit's fucking like legit, you know? Yeah. Like, that ain't, it's that ain't like a little gate they bring in, you know? Yeah, it's like, gonna hold back. You know, a that is down. that is crazy, and like, you see these guys. You, you, I, I had seen and, him. And behind the bucking shoots are holding pens. Right. Okay. So we're gonna bring seventy bulls. To I was just gonna ask how many bulls come. Seventy to these bulls. Events? Um, we have to find a local place to house them overnight because they come in the day before. They got to get their rest. Right, you got brought into the arena. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Find a place. Shoot. And, and, and of course, I volunteer. I'll help you find a place. Yeah. There's all kinds of farms around here. Yeah. Well, you need you need cover this time of year. Yeah. They got to have roof over right. there uh, in case it snows or whatever. Right. It's not as easy so as you how, think. How hard to, was that? Uh, I get, I think our guys are still working on it, but I I think they're going to end up somewhere. Between Hartford and here, I okay. mean, because it's the, there's more farms as you go up. But uh-huh. like, I, I checked with, um, you know, all do the, they now when you say seventy, do they have to all be in their own cage? 
Or they can no, all be in a big, be in one big building. They'll be in approximately 30 pens. 30 pens, okay. Because they get, bulls that are raised on the same ranch are yeah. each other. Right. Right. So, But these holding pens behind the chutes, the bulls that are going to buck that night, okay, so we'll have 40 bulls that come yeah. on Friday. They all have to be put in holding pens in an order in which the, the, the bucking order is predetermined. So you have to have a specific rider on a specific bull, yeah. and there's a day sheet that tells you who's going when. So the guys who put them in those pens, so they can get from where they're sitting through the the labyrinth, if yeah. you will, yeah, yeah. to come out to get in the bucking chute. It though, to me, That's those awesome. are the smartest guys That's in the pretty- job. I, mean, I, I, I talk about logistics done. all the time in the show. And I just love hearing like how all the little intricacies uh-huh. work. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they're done, they run them off and they run them right out the arena into the trucks. Wow. So when you're done, when yeah. the bull's done working, and, and the what bulls, do they eat? Just I guess hay and yeah. feed and yeah. all that. It's, it's supposedly the best feed best you can diet. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they got. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Um, That's amazing. But but they so but. So, some pens you'll see a single bull. Some pens you'll see two bulls that were from the same ranch or whatever. Some pens, so in these holding pens. And some of them, just like, remember when you were playing sports when you were young, you had guys that are just chill, laying down and whatever. You have ones that are pacing. You have yep. ones that, that are kind yeah, of... The same s- way, huh? Scooching the yep. other ones. It, it's just like people. They're really bright animals. Do you ever get angry with each other? Like in the I, I have movie? never seen them get angry with each other. I've seen them get angry with people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's what's the what's the name of the bull that's like the meanest bull or the or right the, now the, the the number one bull is I believe his name is Man Eater. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> we have a bull named Ryan Solo that uh, has won the last two championships, and prior to Ryan Solo being at the top of the game, a bull named Wupa, Wupa, and a kid named Jose Vitor Leme combined for the highest score in history, which was a ninety-eight point seven five. Wow! So there's never been a hundred. No, ever. No Mary Lou Retton's out there, huh? No. no. I can't imagine. I mean, that's got to be... It's almost so what do the judges judge on? Again, for the bull, it's... High, no, for the rider. For the rider. It, it's control. It's you're, you're essentially dancing with the bull. So it's yeah. you've got to follow the bull's movements. Yeah. And, and so they, they can tell the nuances. If a guy's centered right, if his legs are in the right place, if he is spurring, and, and by the way, our spurs are dulled, so they're not really hurting the bull, but if he's able to to spur, then move his leg. That means he's in control. Uh, he can he can uh, move his body how he chooses to move. So his we body. can we can watch that and score yeah. ourselves. You can't yeah. yeah. you know, score it at us. Yeah. Same judges travel around, or the, there's judges different, in each city. D- different different judges. judges in different places depends yeah. on. We've got judges all around the country. Yeah, yeah. So they'll call them in based on locations and those kinds of things. Yeah. Was it like three typical three judges or four four, four judges? Yeah. Oh, look, right. That was his job. Well, I, I, yeah. I was paying attention earlier. Yeah, I, know, I know. I know. I know. I'm trying to like go do all this. How you know the a host is not listening. You, one thing I did learn: there's a lot more to these rodeos behind the scenes yeah. than yeah. actually watching these guys ride the bull. I yeah, mean, between the the feed and how they treat the the bulls and, yeah. and the riders, you have to house them. The it's, steel, the, <laughs> the things that you got to think about are just yeah. it's really remarkable. I find it fascinating how you had to just line them all, like pre line them all up. Yeah, and, it's pretty cool. And they're all like waiting and. You so, should come. You should come Friday afternoon and watch. What I call it the running of the bulls when they yeah. run them off the trucks into the pens. Oh wow! That's I, that usually happens about three or four hours before showtime. Yeah. Um, which is to me one of the coolest things. Right. Right. Yeah. To see how that's all done and how the guys come in. The, the stock contractors are great people. That I mean, for the most part, their living is raising cattle for for food. Yeah. Um, or running farms or ranches. Um, these this is a whole different kind of world that they live in. Um, a, a lot of our retired guys, because I was always worried about what are they going to do when they're done? Because they're going to be done at thirty years old, right? Yeah, and I'll get them a job with my you know perfume licensee. Penalty. They all want to. <laughs> you know what? They're to have a Pendleton salesman go on the road. I it'd be a great career. You know, mm-hmm. I think our get our sponsors to do some of this, but a lot of these guys want to. Maintain that lifestyle. Yeah, we had a kid named Ryan Dirt Eater who was one of the top guys for 13 years. Um, while he was riding bulls, he got his plumber's license. His dad's a plumber, um, so he decided he's just going to go in the plumbing business with his dad. But now he's raising bulls. He's becoming a stock contractor. He, ra- you know, he's he's running his ranch and doing all that and just doing a little plumbing yeah. because all this other stuff is working for him. That's awesome. Buying and selling yeah. livestock and. 
and all that. So it's a it's a different world than people around here are used to. Right. Um, and and just coming to Bridgeport is really cool. New York, we've been going to Madison Square Garden for 17 years. When we first went there, to get anybody to even pay attention was, from my understanding, just <laughs> yeah. a nightmare. Right. right. Now, we sell out pretty much two out of three days. Yeah. Um, it's dress up night for New Yorkers. It's a party. Yeah. They everybody's got a pair of cowboy boots yeah. in, their, in their closet, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna get my boots out. I sell probably six hundred straw hats in New York over the weekend <laughs> wow. because people want to do it. Yeah. And our entertainer who just retired, his name is Flint Rasmussen, he would always in New York say, Okay, everybody take off your hat. Look in your hat. Do you see a number? Your hat's on backwards. Like there's so <laughs> many people that don't know how to wear right, cowboy. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm one of them. Yeah. Well and I interesting. One. I have, yeah. I have wore it once, but I have. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm the merch guy. I have, I have hats, right? <laughs> I had the foam yeah. ten gallon hat when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I I have them, but I I still feel like a poser putting on the hat. Yeah, I'll wear a buckle. I'll wear my boots. Um, I wore my hat one time at an event, but it was L.A. and everybody out there was that way, so I didn't yeah. matter. You know, was, I I know like you know you've been around the area, right? Obviously, yeah. like I think there's that. There's, you know, I know in the country western bars with this country bands around here, the country it's rock bands. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a, a bunch of a lot of girls that got all the country stuff to get dressed up for next Friday. weekend yeah. or two weekends from now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I keep telling my wife somebody should open a western store here. Yeah. Boot Barn should open. A, you know, like there's my, my girlfriend boot loves Boot Barn. She saw the, they were a sponsor, right? Yeah. She yeah. saw the sticker because yeah. she was yeah. watching with me. She saw the sticker uh, on, nice. on the thing. Our she was, all Boot Barn. Yeah. <laughs> People love. Yeah, yeah. but that. The boots and the Western lifestyle wear and all that. Look, there's a little Yellowstone effect to it, but but all in all, people have always liked that. I remember yeah. when I went to Fairfield U in the late '70s, my roommate had a pair of cowboy boots. He was so proud of. He spent like three hundred dollars on them back then. Wow, mm-hmm. I think three hundred dollars a lot now, right? He was so proud of them. And I would make fun of him, and today. I've got you know six pairs of boots in my closet. <laughs> and he's got nothing. Right. right. So it, it's just funny how it all kind of comes around. It does. Absolutely. Like I, I used to like just kind of poo poo it all, but as I got older, I'm like, I, know, I'm it's, telling it's, you, I've been, been to Nashville a couple times. Mm-hmm. I've been to Texas. Uh, we were we in, we were went to a cowboy game. Mm-hmm. Whole another story. Couldn't get in. Bought fake tickets, but oh, there was yeah. like we were like you know now we had nothing to do, so we went downtown and like we went into a lot of the. You know the western the boot places right it wasn't oh, yeah. boot bar yeah. back then but uh you but know the boot stores yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. made boots yeah. oh my god yeah. i mean it's, it's, it's pricey it's, but it's pricey it's big business yeah I boots bet. and, and uh, less and less people are wearing cowboy hats but there are some real high-end hats yeah and you know, remember when imus was you know oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, he always wore one he would always wear boots and a hat yeah, yeah. he was a big western guy a big nfr guy his son wyatt was a roper and you know, he. It's, it's funny because the guys that he used to mention that were training his son, that he paid probably huge bucks to have these guys train his son, Trevor Brazil and Joe Beaver, they're actually going to be involved. We're doing a rodeo with Kid Rock. So we're I not, saw him on the website, yeah. We're not rodeo, yeah. but we, we're involved with rodeo. When I first joined, we couldn't say the word. Now it's like, you know what? This is all Western lifestyle. We've right. got to support all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, our CEO, Sean Gleason, Kid Rock's a fan of our, our sport. And he and Kid Rock were talking. They said, we got to do something fun. And and they decided they're going to do a rodeo, the Kid Rock Rock and Roll Rodeo. Nice. Um, it's going to be during our World Finals down in Fort Worth. It's actually in Arlington at AT&T. Um, and we're going to have six teams of... So it's team rodeo. Yeah. Um, two of each discipline competing against each other for a million dollars in prize money for yeah, wow. the, the one yeah. night. Uh, but Trevor Brazil and... and Joe Beaver, our coaches, is part of this thing. I'm like, yeah. it all kind of comes around. Right, right. You know, I heard of them 15 years ago and listened to Imus on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those guys are competing. Nice. Now they're the old guys coaching the kids. I was just thinking about Imus the other day. I forget why, but I'm like, God, I miss him. Uh, it's, it's, uh, he was like one of those legends. Like, he, he I grew up with him through you know, my mother driving to school every morning. She was driving yeah. to school every morning, and I just started listening to him. Yeah. And then, you know, Stern came out, eh. But mm-hmm. Imus was, Imus then was I just started listening to Imus yep. on my own. You know, he got a little off the rails later in life, yeah. but, you know, don't but we all? I got, I got a little quick, all. quick thing of, of claim to fame. Uh, I actually went to uh, high school in, and grammar school with uh, his wife. Oh, yeah? Dear. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. No kidding. I always yeah. wondered what happened to her. Like, after he passed, mm-hmm. did they keep the ranch? Did they do all these things? And Yeah, they used to do a lot of uh, charity, take kids down to yeah. the ranch and all that stuff. So interesting. Is his brother Fred still alive? 
I have no idea. Because yeah. I remember at Mohegan, they used to have Imes oh, Ranch bad. Coffee there. Yes. Yeah. It's not there anymore. No. no. I don't see it anywhere. Unless yeah. you get it online. It's, but yeah. I don't see he was the one man. Who used to see it in yeah. Stone? Oh, his brother wasn't involved in that? He, he just, gave just his, he threw his brother a bone. Oh, was it that what yeah. it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, well. So... All right, Ray. Yes. So interestingly, the, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. One, no, last, no, no, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. one last thing about what we're talking about. I'm yes. I worked for Orange County Choppers for a number of years, oh. years ago. So oh, the knuckleheads who built motorcycles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah we know where they are. Right yeah. before we got canceled, the last deal that I did was with um, my pillow with Michael. Oh, but uh, yeah, Michael, yep. What's his name? And I had him this close to agreeing to do. He did a lot with Imus. Yeah. So I had him this close. I wanted to do a Western bike for the Imus Ranch. That wow. I was could promote and it would yeah, be yeah, great yeah. for us and all this. and and we're like this close and we do the unveiling of his the my pillow bike and Paul Senior blew off Michael had all of his investors at a luncheon and Senior was supposed to go to that luncheon and shake hands and kiss babies mm-hmm. and he blew it off oh mm. so so Lindell got pissed Lindell was like. That's the end of the Imus bike. That's the end. Of, I'll never talk to you again. Uh, it was like oh I, man, I, I was like a jilted girlfriend at that point because how many years ago was that? Uh, like God, roughly it was just 2012. Okay, isn't that kind of when he was like their whole company was kind of in family right. shambles? We were, yes, yeah. we were blowing up. We were yeah. imploding. I thought we had one more year and yeah. we didn't. We yeah. got canceled right after the My Pillow build. Oh man. Mm. Yeah, I gotta have you back on. That's a whole nother show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was there. For, I was there for seven years. Oh man, man. yeah, yeah. Nice there. yeah. 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 That, but we'll be, need to be drinking for that. One. Oh no, 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 one hundred percent. Well, actually, let's get some. That'll be like a three in the afternoon. Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> let's get some ice drink, yeah. sit down drink some Pendleton. We'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So speaking of Pendleton, yes, Pendleton sir. is the sponsor of this. Uh, the number one sponsor yes. of the show in Bridgeport this week. Uh, right. You does tell us a little history about the product. I know you know. So there's a. Actually, the, the way we got involved in, in rodeos and, and PBR and all that is uh, there's actually a town in Oregon that's called the Pendleton. It's called Pendleton. And um, so they used to do, back in 1910 or 11, they used to do a Pendleton Roundup. And um, that was huge back then. And that's how we started with getting involved with rodeos since we, you know, it was our whiskey's made. And, and named after Pendleton, um, so uh, that's how we started with all the rodeo and, and Midwest. The Roundup was the biggest rodeo in the country at one point. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pendleton it's still Roundup. Has, yeah, and it's, it's still, still a huge, huge it's reputation. Like a, it's like a three-day event or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's I, it's never been there, but yeah. And um, even your tagline, "Letter Buck." Letter came Buck. Up. Let's go. So it, interesting, like like I, the the corporate folks that that come into the office that I see on, on the road. I'm like, can we just do a letter buck with a bull? It's, it's a horse. It's going to stay a horse. It's going to yeah. be, you know, yeah. because you don't mess with the logo. Right. You know, but but the letter buck tagline is awesome, and the product's awesome. Proud of, yeah, we have a, we have a uh, 12-year-old ride, which is incredible. But one of the uh, interesting things we do is um, we actually do a military pack, um, which is... You know, it's our for the Bob Woodruff Foundation. Yeah, 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 for the Bob Woodruff oh, cool. uh, Foundation. So, uh, what we do is we donate uh, money towards uh, the Bob Woodward, uh, Woodford um, Woodruff Woodruff <laughs> <laughs> um, charity, and yeah. uh, but you know, in general, just uh, we give back. All yeah. right, so uh, we you know we're not only involved in you know rodeos and bull riding. Uh, we're trying to branch out. Okay, so. You know, Midwest to Northeast, we're 500 case brand, okay? Um, we're trying to move that brand across the country. And um, we have the great whiskey, we got the story, we got everything going for it. Um, and by bringing um, the PBR to Connecticut, to bring them, I believe that you're in uh, Massachusetts. Worcester, Massachusetts. So Banger, doing Maine. events like that and, and teaming up with, uh, you know, the PBR, uh, Pendleton whiskey is is grown. It's moving to the East Coast, which is which is fabulous for our com- company, and also fabulous for the whiskey to get people to uh, try it and 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 really get involved in, in liking uh, Pendleton whiskey. Yeah. So the SKUs you brought today are the the military one. We have the we original have the, behind yeah, behind. John, John, John is the that original. Big bad bear. That's a yep. half gallon in case we really want to get crazy. <laughs> it's a, it's a, that's, that's, a, that's a John size. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's a that's a big bad yeah. bear. So. That's what I'll save that one for the 
For the, the yeah, black the orange pillow. Couch. Got got the orange couch. Couch. So we also do a mid midnight, which is a uh, a little bit a um, little bit higher uh, proof. Yeah. Same whiskey, just uh, we um, we actually cut our whiskey with the Mount Hood Glacier fed water. Ooh. So um, it, it you know we make that midnight just a little bit more stronger, ninety yeah. proof plus, a little potent, a little bit more yeah. juice to it. And then uh, we also have a, a director's reserve, which is uh, twenty year old uh, oh. whiskey, which is fabulous. Yeah. It's, it's I'll put that whiskey against anything that uh, it, it, that's on the market right now. Um, but yeah, that's our, you know that's our. I'm, I'm a rye guy, so I see the rye. Yeah, there. there's a 12 year old rye here, um, which is probably one of the best ryes that are out there right now, um, and uh, we we just um, mixing this or having it neat. It's it's, un, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, we also were getting involved with. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw that show. It's called um, Meat Eater. Uh, it's a, it's a special. Um, we're doing more like. Uh, they, like a like a, like a, a they, food show. Yeah, they yeah. hunt and they actually eat what they hunt. Okay, um, which is which is really cool. Um, and we're getting into like camping, fishing, uh, all that stuff. So um, get the outdoorsy. Yeah. Nice. Yep. yep. Well, it's all similar lifestyle and it it, it fits. Yeah, it fits world. fits. That's a uh, great sipping whiskey. Yeah, I don't know if I've had. I must have had it before. What Pendleton? Pendleton. Oh my God, it's I, okay. incredible. You're a bartender. Yeah, try these things when you get to work. Yeah, mix it with, mix it in a Bloody Mary. It's really good. Oh, Bloody Mary, whiskey Bloody Mary. Yeah, let's go. Mix it in margarita. Okay, it's a it's a wicked good margarita. Really? Yeah. Wow. I've I've taught this by a couple of the. Yeah, so that's one thing. Is margaritas are funny. That's one thing I've never like veered off of tequila. You know. Right. But like. I've used tequila in like an espresso martini, or like mm-hmm. I've, I've I've used tequila somewhere else, but I've never whiskey. I mean, I, I I'll try old fashions and you know all day long. So a Pendleton that, whiskey Bloody Mary. I'll I'll be yeah. here uh, Sunday morning. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I won't. I'll be sleeping. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Saturday night, I'll prep them for you. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so we're going to be drinking this Friday night, yep. not this Friday, but uh, know, the, at the March Friday, first, March first. first. Yeah. Yeah. What do you know? What kinds are going to be there, or? We're gonna have all. Uh, we have. The, we're gonna have the rye. We're gonna have the midnight, midnight, and also the original. Not the director's cut. Maybe no, in your that, set, set yeah. underneath. That you'll have to see me for. Yeah. You know, you know how many times I get a raise that come around the corner? Back on the show. You gotta, yeah. you gotta go to the crack shack at the uh, <laughs> yeah. Cruciani's house. Today. Ray's always like, uh, you know, just saw him up at the casino. We'll get a quick oh story before we finish the show. Oh my god. So That's we're up nuts. at the casino and and. That's a we won't mention the show because this is a Pendleton one, but he had a different whiskey up there, and he's always got the you know the ten year here. But you know, go see my guy Troy over here. For he's the, got the uh, he's not, got the special the special sauces <laughs> behind the bar. But, but I uh, think it was the it was the the person we met afterwards. Yes, which was pretty pretty amazing, pretty fun guy. Yeah, so we're, so um, we're up. So it's the wine fest. You've, I'm sure you've mm-hmm. either never been there if you haven't, but you know what it is. Yep. So it was their twentieth. It was their 20th anniversary yes, this year. Yeah. So yeah. Ray always hooks me up with tickets and the whole thing for me and Nicole. So another, you know, we're staying, we all stay over the Saturday night. And you could agree, it's not as good as it used to be, but it's still a fun day. Fun I mean, day. as far as like where it is, mm-hmm. it used to be a lot more intimate. Now it's just a big hall. And so we're walking around and I got a good buzz going and I'm a diehard Patriots fan. You must be Giants. Jets. Do I have a, but yeah. I have a, I'm Giants, Yankees. Yep. I have a son that's a big Boston. Um, okay. I'm the we're, right, we're right in the middle of the. Right. That's what I you, figured. You grew yeah. up here and. Yeah. It, you're and, on the cusp. Yeah, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your Dolphin fan, so we're yeah, right Yeah. Yeah. You're the, you're the oddball. Yeah. So we're up there and the show's about to end. It's 12 to 5 and it's like 4.15 and I look over and I see Ty Law. And I knew Ty Law was involved with a vodka called Corvus. And it maybe been out less than a year and he's taking pictures so i'm like screw it i'll sit in line wait for him so we're waiting waiting finally get up there nicest guy in the world we yeah, rip a shot <clears throat> takes like five pictures with him whatever we're on our way so fast forward dinner i'm on a slot i actually hit a slot right as ray and his wife julie are walking by i'm like oh, yeah, yeah i just walked in at 1300 let's go let's have a drink so then i go around i buy the drinks 
Ray goes and hit like 700 on a yeah. slot while he's sitting there. We're like, oh, nah, you know, we're all having fun. And now it's like midnight. And the one thing about like the casinos is they shut down. Like they like bar wise, like they're okay. like, you know, last call done. Really? You guys are done. Oh yeah. They don't mess around those those Indian laws. So we go Novell, right? Yes. Novelle. We go to Novell. Great spot. <laughs> yeah, we go to Novell, and uh, you knew the GM, I think, yes. or the manager that yeah. was there. Yeah. And we're just we. There's like one more, so we're like, all right, cool. So we all Same, get, yeah. you know, my girlfriend, his wife, the four of us, we all get one last call. The kind of the lights are going up, and we see across the bar, it's like a big oval bar. We see on the other side is Tyler. Tyler. Now this dude's been drinking because I watched him. Like every time he took a picture with somebody, he, he was doing a shot. a shot with him, right? So watching him, and uh, he's kind of making his way around. And Ray, why don't you take it from here? I'm gonna lo- I'm gonna load the video on okay, here so cool. I can play. Well, I'll play audio, but you, you. So I mean, I walk up to him. I said, you know, I, I got this little thing my my daughter and I um, came up with, and I do these videos of cooking and being out with people and celebrities and all that stuff so it's an instagram ray with the sauce type thing so uh anyways you know i so i walk up to him i said hey you know do you mind doing a video with me and this guy's the coolest guy on the planet he said absolutely i'll do it i said well you know my my punchline is banging baby you you know at the end you gotta say hey it's banging baby and he's like yeah sure i'll do anything so, so, so I actually Here's have Ty Law. So there was two videos, right? So the first video, I'm like waiting for it to happen. So as <laughs> and now we're all bombed, okay? You know, yeah, and Ty's, Ty's bombed. Yeah, we, we are. Too. We are so like we're, we're I'm like fun. I'm yeah, ready for a fucking bed. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's about to do the video. I'm shooting it, and like there, remember that muscle dude that was there? Like, could yeah. he put his arms down? And his muscles yeah, were so big. He kept right? doing pictures and Ty. Yeah. So he, the Ty's like, look at the size of this guy. And now Ray's just like, all right, I want to get this video over with, right? Yeah. So I stop filming. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna fucking wait. Like, I can't. Like this fucking big dude over here is in love with Ty. Ty's <laughs> in love with him, and Ray's just standing there. So finally, Ray like kind of pulls him in, and I, I'm not gonna play this part but i'm gonna play the part where they actually like i filmed the thing but and ray's like i, I just you know hey how you doing uh, my daughter and i have this thing ray with the sauce it's about food and making food all right so so here here is uh ray's <laughs> I was crazy. first ever cameo with ty law hey guys ray with the sauce here i'm with ty law in nobel this place one. is banging baby it's ty law it's banging it's banging it's banging it's banging <laughs> it was, fun, it was and he, he was good sport. He went along with it, you know. Um, so, I, so I became a Ty Law fan yeah, right there. So Ty Law's cousins there, and I after all this happened, I said to Ty, I said, "Hey, aren't you doing something here tomorrow?" And he's like, "Yeah." So the next day was the AFC NFC Championship. So because he he's hosting two separate parties, watch parties for each one. He goes. Well, dude, come by. Like, sit in my little suite. Like, you can hang out with us. Now, I'm like, now I'm like a fucking 18 year old again. I'm like, oh my God, I can sit with Ty Law, <laughs> Hall of Famer, been to 100 games when I had season tickets. Like, this is amazing. And my girlfriend's looking at me like, I have to go home tomorrow. I have to work Monday. You know? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> Take the car. It's not, yeah, no, well, I, which I should have done. And so I'm like, no worries. Uber. <laughs> so we wake up the next morning. We meet a couple other friends for a little Bloody Mary with Pendleton next time. And I call Ray, and he's like, oh, I'm at my cousin's right now up in his room. I might have a drink, but we're heading home. And yeah, I said, Because my wife was saying the same right, thing. Right, she's got to teach on Monday. Oh, yeah. You know, we got to go. So I'm like, All right. So I drive home. So the whole ride home, I'm texting everyone that I can think of that might want to ride back up with me. And I'll get, you know, rooms are cheap on Sunday nights and hang out with Ty Law. And, and, and I was 0 for 20. I'm like, are you fucking, I'm in the bar business. I can't find one guy that's got Monday off that wants to come up. <laughs> no one. So I just got home. I said, fuck it. So a week goes by and I'm calling Ray about, you know, about the show and, you know, what, what time we want to do it. And uh, what happened to you, Ray? Well, <laughs> so now I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, one drink leads into the next. And then my wife's having fun. She's gambling. So my cousin and I said, well, we might as well place a bet on the game. So we, unbeknownst to me that this party was going on with Ty Law, that he was invited, that I wasn't. But, you know. Oh, you were. You were all standing uh, around yeah, that I day. Don't, I don't remember. We were <laughs> one too many penalties. Anyways. So I get there, I walk by his suite. He grabs me like he knew me like I was his best friend. Ray, Ray with the sauce, come on in, come on in. So long story short, 
He said, what do you, you know, stay for drinks? I said, well, we, you know, we're going to head back and grab something to eat and then we're going to leave. But we're going to place a bet. He goes, oh, I'm going to follow you guys. Here's Ty Law. He's like, has no idea how to bet. So he goes, I'm never, never allowed to. Allowed to. Never <laughs> yeah. So I said, come on, I'll, I'll place one with you. So we put our bet in, my cousin and I, and then I said, you know, who do you like? You know, and, and he goes, I don't know, you pick it. So I, I actually used my money, I, I buy him a, a bet. Him. You know, obviously we didn't win. Look but at you, by the way. I'm looking, you know, this guy made millions throughout his right. career, and I'm spending yeah. the yeah. 25 bucks for the bet. Right. I'm like, really? You know, but anyways, <laughs> you think you throw in half. Are you calling Ty cheap? You, uh, you are a Dolphin you know, fan. I am a Dolphin yeah, fan. I, dolphin you know, even fan. though I like the guy, I mean, he was really a, a great sport with uh, Ray with the sauce video, but. Ray with uh, the sauce. I don't know. So you didn't hit it. So you now know. I'm like, so, you, so like this prick. He's didn't the, call me. He's got your seat. <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's got, got my well, seat. To be honest with you, like, I didn't son. sit. I had one drink. He gave me a shot. I walked by, and we, we went back to dinner. But it was nice that he remembered. I mean, I was... His I mean, cousin pretty, texted me later that day. Yo, you're coming up? Because <laughs> like, I was all about it. And he's like, you're not going to be here. You know, like, uh, like, I hear this shit all the time. And sure enough, I was that guy. But I tried my damnest to get back up there. Yeah, he, uh, he was... Um, you know, I figured the night before at Novell, we were, you know, pretty... At that point of night, we were and drinking. the fact that he would remember after drinking all that. Yeah, I know. Right? That's, what, that's what I was surprised well, these, about. These are, are world-class athletes. They probably don't even get drunk. Nah, he, he was, was drunk that night. But. Yeah, he had some cocktails in him. That's for All sure. right, we'll get off a couple quick quick things, and then we'll let you guys go. Those world-class drinkers. John, is there is there gambling on PBR? Now that we just started talking about that? <laughs> there, there actually is. I would now. assume there is, right? It's just starting. Yeah. Because it, the hardest part was finding somebody who can handicap it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're owned by Endeavor. Okay. Who owns Open Bet and the, like they're in the business, so they finally found people to handicap. actually handicap it. And, and so it's, I think, legal in four states right now. Not Connecticut, though. I don't think it's not on like FanDuel or any of that think. stuff yet. Not yet. Damn. Hmm. That would be fun to gamble on that. You can, we, I mean, we, they, we, they, throw, you know, throw we, we do have a it's, fantasy it's, game, and we do have, I think, it, I should know this, and I'll probably get fired because I don't, but there is a, an online thing where you can kind of. Bed, yeah, ride, like, ride and some of those kinds of things. It should be on our website. So the so the gambling aspect would it be like horse racing almost, or <laughs> it's it's different things. It's you ride, it's a little ride bit. no ride. It's score. It's you know whether you both score. wave when you go up when yeah. you kick <laughs> your heels. I mean, you know, as, as betting as is now, like flip coins. Rodeo guys person. are big gamblers too. Yeah, oh, I, I bet. They, I bet they, they probably play they're quarters they're in the alley. There's always before. something going on. <laughs> I bet I can stay on longer than you. All that, that, that's how it'll start it. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. It was a bet that somebody said, I bet you can't ride that thing. <laughs> you want me to get on that thing? All right, uh, Ray. We, so so uh, we got some tickets. Yes, um, absolutely. I'm just going to say, basically, first people that see me, 6 o'clock on Thursday at Stonebridge. I got okay. tickets for you. There you go. You know, come down just, and see me. I got, what, two tickets? Yep, give me their uh, email and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it'll all, all be digital? Yes. Okay. So, uh, we'll do it that way. Just come down, and it, 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 what night would it be for? Their pick? Or their pick. I have Friday so, and Saturday. So, Friday the 1st or Saturday the 2nd. That's correct. And they're both the same show, pretty much, right? No. No? Second. Well, well the championship round's on Saturday. On oh, Saturday. okay, okay. So, yeah, but it's, 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 it's what I mean is, like, you're seeing the same. Yeah, same right, thing. Right, right. You're going to be right there and watching Guys all the excitement. Guys same. Very exciting, yeah. Is there, like, a, a pre-show kind of thing? Like, what time do the gates open? Uh, hour before the doors are hour before the show so the show's at eight o'clock okay so seven seven o'clock doors um jump in buy some souvenirs That'd yeah be good. absolutely <laughs> um and then there's i i think that they the pyro's right at eight nice the start and we are as ray said that um pendleton is very patriotic and very much about you know first responders and all that kind of thing pbr our guys are tremendous when it comes to supporting military. We're actually um, in Hampton this weekend in Hampton, Virginia. Um, there's actually a Navy squadron that has the, a group of fighter jets that they call the Raging Bulls. Oh, nice. and nice. We're honoring the squadron, and they named all their planes after PBR Bulls. Oh, oh cool. So cool. we're honoring the squadron down in Hampton. Our CEO's flying in to, to meet with them and. Um, they're gonna. There's actually a PBR bar in Hampton. Everybody's getting a drink on the house and hopefully gets to come visit the they're show. serving the uh, Pendleton Military uh, Edition. Pendleton yeah. is the uh, is the host of the after party mm -hmm. oh. in Hampton. Yes, 
Is there an after party in Bridgeport yes, on Friday night? Brewport. Yeah. Brewport. Oh! Yeah. Oh. Both nights there's an after party at Brewport. Can't go wrong with that place. Yeah, it's going to be uh, quite awesome. Uh, giveaways and, and all that fun stuff. All right, whoever's listening, uh, come on down Thursday at 6. Imagine if I had like, what if I had 30 people there? We can get them tickets, right? Well, <laughs> I don't know about 30, but. <laughs> We'll talk. First one, first, first come, first serve. And tickets yeah. start at like twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great time. It's worth the. Uh, I'll buy a pair for somebody. It's a great too. night out. Yeah, and, and I have a promo yeah. code. You have a promo code. I that do. I'll give you. Yeah. You can get discounted tickets. Yes. By just by. Yeah, just by coming and seeing me. See you get dis- dis- discount tickets. Perfect. That's John, awesome. thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, that was that was awesome. Yeah. I really didn't know what to expect, and uh, your, your knowledge and uh, working, it's, I, I'm so excited to go now. It's a guaranteed good time. Yeah. You, do, you will not be disappointed, not one bit. And uh, we'll have you back on again, drinking uh, talking and talking some, talk. some, well, that's, that's, some OCC. <laughs> that's just it. you got to have a uh, time when you're drinking again. So yeah, can, uh, I know. I've been a, uh, yeah, been a little... Uh, Oh, it's only been a week, but uh, <laughs> a week's a long time <laughs> for me anyway. For you, yeah. <laughs> and Ray, of course, as always, good yes. friend of mine. Thanks for uh, setting this all up. Yeah, man. Uh, right this was a great show. I'm I'm excited for it, and uh, I I can't wait to go. So, thanks again, guys. I will uh, talk to you next week, and again, come see me Thursday, and I'll have some tickets for you for the show, and uh, PBR. It's going to be a Bridgeport Pendleton whiskey, baby. Pendleton whiskey sponsor. Ooh. It's the Velocity Tour. So. Yeah, instead of professional bull riders, probably Pendleton bull riders, PBR. Yeah, oh, yeah. Why there not? you go. Right. Nice sure, little play on that. I like, I like that. it. A little, little Pendleton. Yeah. Thanks again, guys. Have a great week and a great weekend. Stay good. Thank you.